Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at uh, plot structures and I've been diving into two different approaches to the plot structures in terms of choosing different uh, plotting methods that um, will jive with me better. Um, so I have the three act structure and I also have the th eight point structure. So because I've got two different um, topics and projects on the go, sorry, I'm because I've got two different projects on the go, um, I'm going I'm going to use the three act structure for my young adult paranormal of Devil's Bay, and I've decided to try and take the eight plot approach, eight point approach for my new adult dark fantasy series. Um, so I'm going to give you a brief outline of both the three act structure and the eight point structure. Um, so also please don't get forget to give this video a like because it supports my channel um, subscribe to see if I can hit my subscriber goal for the end of this quarter um, also helps me and let's dive straight back straight into the two plot structures okay so we'll start with uh, the three act structure so I've, I'm looking at the breakdown of it so we start with an opening scene, which is basically you set the tone of the story and you introduce your protagonist and also give the setting of the area, uh, the setup. So it's the scenes that introduce the rest of the characters, a bit more about the world and hints at the changes that will come. Uh, then you've got the inciting incident, which is the surprise moment that will actually turn everything on its head um, and kicks off the main plot. Then we move into the call to action, so how will your main characters react to the incident and uh, it will force the choices that your protagonist is going to make. So that's act one of this um, thing and then you've got act two, but uh, act two is kind of broken into two parts. Um, so you've got the choice, so how does um, your main character so my main character Delilah deal with the changes and what are the stakes involved. Then you've got the right, uh, mounting problems, which is things kick into high gear, um, what keeps your main character uh, going. And then you've got the main point, uh, the midpoint. So the surprise event that wrecks everything and raises the stakes um, after a temporary win. And then you've got the second part of Act 2, so it's kind of a two part of the same act, uh, which is More Troubles, which is there's the fallout, the midpoint, and continuing conflict starts to pile up around your character. Uh, the disaster, so the moment when everything goes wrong and the goals appears impossible to overcome. Uh, turning point, so you get new information or new inspiration. And you set forward, and that is the turning point. Is also will break you into the third act, which is basically the resolution of the whole story. So the plan or resolving of Act Two, which is everything moves into place and subplots get tied up. So you should also have a subplot running through, and the stakes reach their peak. Then we go into conflict. Oh, the climax, sorry, the climax, which is the protagonist faces the big bad, the um, thing, the main obstacle, and either they win or they lose. And then the demoting, after the climax, the protagonist or the world have changed. The final scene, uh, so basically the final scene also gives you closure to the story. So it doesn't have to be a happily ever after, it just has to be after the battle, like what happens after the big doo-doos happen. So mine uh, in Rippled Reflection is there's a big reveal in my climax and then I take a moment to actually take you with a couple of the characters to um for them to have a little bit of a debrief about that. And then we move on to, so that's how I'm going to be trying to do Devil's Bay just because it's a lot more just sort of 
it flows better for me, I think. But I'm also going to find out with the eight point structure, which is what I'm going to be using for my new adult dark fantasy series of retellings. So that is the stasis. So basically, similarly, we open up on the world. Everyone's just going about their, their lives the normal way. And then we move on to the trigger, which is something has to happen for a change to happen. And then we have the choice. So your main character must make a choice for the story to go forwards. Um, and then you get into the movement through the plot of bad. So the first sort of hiccup, worse than ish hits the fan. And then the, um, so what happens, um, basically the big ultimate, like everything's lost. So you've lost the, something's happened, then your critical choice. So your char your main character or there has to be a critical decision that will change absolutely everything. Then we go into the climax. So the big battle usually in a book. And then we go to the reversal. So it doesn't have to, it's basically the reversal is returning to a stasis, but it doesn't have to be this same stasis as the before. So that is the two. So yes, that is my two that I'm looking at. I'm just going to see how they flow nicely for me. And then hopefully cemented in my plotting structure choice for my planning I'll let you know how I go because I've done a full story beat breakdown using both plot structures um, so later on this year I might give you a I might revisit this for you and tell you which one I may be more leaning towards so let's use our voices to promote positive change in the world also please don't hesitate to let me know if you have any plotting structures that you like. Um, I would be interested to hear about them. Um, if you use either of them that I've mentioned in the video, please let me know as well. And I'd like to thank you and goodbye!